I certainly don't claim to be an expert on South Africa, but I thought it was important to, to make a few points. One of those is that, as far as I see, there, there is very unlikely to be a, a stop in how fuel cells grow and in how hydrogen grows and of course they have a demand for electrolyzers for pet fuel cells and for platinum grid methods. Uh, so platinum particularly in fuel cells but in PEM electrolyzers it's also important to have iridium and there are demands for other of the precious metals as well so ruthenium part of certain catalysts etc etc. Supply chains are forming they're not yet crystallizing, so it's a good time to be engaging in the market and to be proving capabilities and to be supporting indigenous industries. But it is also noticeable that first movers are starting to position themselves well. Whereas two, three years ago, a company might have been penalized for having a hydrogen strategy saying they were investing in fuel cells, uh, their share price might have been knocked. Now it's quite the opposite. Now there is, you know, why, why are you not considering this? What are the benefits? How can we move it forward? The first question comes from Mark Tuit from Oyster Catcher Investments. And the question is, how does hydrogen efficiency compare to batteries? What are the losses by comparison? Good, good question. Um, a question that often gets asked. Um, it, it's complicated to answer because it depends on exactly what, what system you're comparing and, and what, what aspects you're considering. A very simple round-trip efficiency, if you're turning electricity into hydrogen, turning it back into electricity, is is not very good. So you'll get maybe 30% of the energy you put in back out again. And batteries on that simple round-trip store electricity, put it out again, is is more like 70%, uh, 75%. That doesn't tell the whole story. The, the reason that people are considering hydrogen uh, as energy storage and for transport is because you have all sorts of other benefits. So for heavy duty, if you took a 40-ton truck and you wanted to be able to power that with a battery, you'd need an 8-ton battery. And you'd need uh, several megawatts of charging capability in order to charge it. And you'd need a lot of cooling and you'd need a lot of other things around that. Whereas in principle, at least a hydrogen truck, you can fast fill in 15 minutes. You don't lose any payload. So the, the, I tend to go back to if you have renewable electricity and you can use it directly, do so. If you can use it sensibly in a battery, do that. If you need something else, which is potentially this long long range or high payload or uh, better storage capability, then you need to start thinking about hydrogen. And if you need to produce a molecule, such as you would in ammonia or in other words, then you don't have a a comparator at all. It, It has to be hydrogen. So it's an important question, but it does need to be coloured by the exact circumstances of, of the comparison. There's another question from Andre Backer from 91. So he says, I understand that one of the limitations to PEMS are the availability of iridium in the market. Are there any technological solutions to use more platinum in PEM electrolyzers, Or will we see much faster growth in alkyne electrolyzers? I don't think iridium is is limiting at the moment. Um, There is a concern that if we get to multi-gigawatts of PEM electrolyzers, then that will start to to make a significant dent in the the iridium market. Uh, That's a few years off. And there are two or three approaches. One is reducing the amount of iridium that's used in the catalyst, which is certainly possible. And to some extent, electrolyzers have lagged behind fuel cells in terms of their research and development. Uh, there's been a colossal focus on pet fuel cells over the last two or three decades by very, very deep pitted corporations uh, like Toyota and Hyundai and others. And so uh, the levels of catalyst loading have come down very significantly. That's, that's not been true of electrolyzers, but there is, I believe, the possibility to reduce the iridium loading by at least 90% and still achieve the right performance. So we're, we're, we're heading in the right direction. There will undoubtedly be a lot of alkaline electrolyzers in the market. They are currently the lower cost technology. They have uh, a, a good proven track record in large scale deployment. They will be significant. But I think 
that the scale of the ambition and the benefits of pen electrolyzers, which are particularly about footprints and about system simplicity uh, and about, to some extent, coupling with dynamic renewable energy sources, means that they're going to they're going to take a, a decent proportion as well. So I think I think the I think it's unlikely PGMs will be a limiting factor. Um, but uh, it, it's always possible. I'm going to close with a question to Vinay. Um, you know, bringing it closer to home, Vinay, you're involved in the fuel cell industry in South Africa, and as we've heard, there's many, many opportunities in different sectors of this market. But from a South African perspective, Vinay, uh, where's the sweet spot for for company to invest in South Africa, and where to invest in the fuel cell industry? Could you just, just spend a minute? I know you probably need an hour, but just give us a sense of where is the best bang for buck. If you're going to invest in fuel cells in South Africa, if, you, if you're going to invest uh, $10 million or $5 million, and I, and I give the check to you, where, where would you put that? Uh, over to you, Vinay. Well, interesting question, Anbal. Thanks for that. The, from a South African uh, or even African market perspective, the, the uptake for fuel cells uh, right now is relatively small. So you might not necessarily want to be investing in producing the full component, fuel cell components, or marketing it into the uh, country and the continent. I think we will probably be late uh, adopters of the technology. And as the cost base comes down, then this market opens up. Uh, our view is the, the early stage opportunity really lies in the, in the fuel cell components, and especially the one, ones that link into the PGM industry. So there's a very nice synergy that, that evolves uh, from there where if you're able to localize the manufacturing of the actual components of the fuel cell that use the PGMs, I'm talking in particular the membrane electron assemblies, the catalyst. If you build in recycling into that mix, then you can produce a very nice export market initially uh, that takes your local metal into local production for export initially, bring it back into recycling in a closed loop model. That's uh, probably over the next five to 10 years is probably the sweet spot. Beyond that, the market for the actual full components including electrolyzers and fuel cell deployment, really start to gain more traction. So from a sequencing perspective, that is probably the way that we would address it and, and, and look at it as the, as the best strategic way for approaching the market.